Hello everyone, welcome to Pokédex, the channel where I build decks for the Pokémon trading card game. Today I have a sweet rogue deck for you guys. Sun and Moon is out, so we finally have new cards to build decks with, uh, so I'm super excited about that. Um, usually uh, most channels uh, on YouTube will focus on the most competitive decks, uh, the CGI, Ombreon, all that. Uh, but as you guys know, I'm uh, I usually focus more on the rogue decks. Um, you guys have all the other channels uh, to go see the competitive stuff. I'm just going to uh, be playing something that I think is fun and a little bit quirky. So if you guys actually have deck ideas or stuff like that, send them to me. This is actually not my uh, deck idea. This was built by a friend of mine who I have actually I think I've actually played some some of his like one or two of his decks before on this channel. His name is Oscar Batalha. Uh, he's actually a Portuguese dude that I know in real life, one of my um, Pokemon playing friends. And he suggested that I play a Vikavolt deck with Dragonite and Taurus. He actually gave me a list, but I, I did some changes with the numbers. I cut some Chef and I, I think I made it a little bit more consistent. Uh, so let's dive into the deck straight away. Um, Vikavolt as I mentioned, is the main uh, Pokemon here. is a stage 2 uh, electric type. Um, the focus is going to be the ability Strong Charge. Uh, once during your turn before you attack, you may search your deck for a Grass Energy and a Lightning Energy card and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like, then shuffle your deck. Uh, it does have an attack, sometimes it's relevant because this guy is electric and it does hit for weaknesses. And also 150 is not that bad, especially on a non-EX, non-GX Pokemon like Vika Vault is. Um, mostly we want to protect it so that we can strong charge every single turn, which means we accelerate two energy from our deck into play, which is actually awesome. We do we are forced to play uh, both grass and lightning energy, um, but that's hardly a problem when we are attacking with um, colorless Pokemon like we are in the stack. Uh, so as far as Pokemon go, we have Dragon ITX. It's uh, I can say it's our main attacker. Uh, we have the ability to pull up. Sometimes it's relevant, but usually it isn't. Uh, this is something like if the opponent, or if we have discarded the Shaman, and then uh, in the later stages of the game we need to get the Shaman back because we got End or something, sometimes the ability, the ability pull up is relevant. But most of the time uh, we just bench the Dragon ITX without thinking too much about it. Uh, for 4 energy, 4 colorless energy, it has Hyper Beam, which hits for 130. <coughs> Excuse me. And you discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Um, this is a, a very good to hit attacker. Uh, it does cost a lot of energy, but once again, we can charge it up in a single turn with DCE and the Vika Vault's ability. And then we hit for one thir 130, which is half of uh, pretty much all Pokemon's health. Um, 130 times 2 is 260, which is more than a, than a Waylord, for example. So we can to hit everything, and we by, by removing an energy attached to one of our opponent's Pokemon, to the active Pokemon, we uh, make it a lot harder for them to attack us. Um, a lot of Pokemon that hit 1 hit KOs depend on the amount of energy in play. Um, Darkrai, Ivoltol, uh, Mega Mewtwo. So this Hyper Beam kind of protects ourselves uh, also, which is good. We are playing three of this guy. We have the Shaman as usual, and then our other attacker is Taurus GX. That's one of the things that I like about this deck. Um, Taurus makes great use of the DCE, but also we can charge it with a single Vika Vault ability. And the fact that we play two Ninja Boy um, makes it like it's r really easy for this deck to just um, kill something from our opponent and then they hit our Dragonite back and we immediately Ninja Boy into Taurus and knock out an, uh, something else that he has. Usually that results in the opponent uh, being out of energy or uh, in a, or very close to being out of energy, which is great for us. Um, so yeah, Taurus works really well here. Um, Mad Bull GX is usually the GX attack that we use most of the games. Um, I, I'm saying usual. Usually, it's the only GX Pokemon that we have, but we do play one Clefairy. Uh, Clefairy is here for Metronome. Uh, we usually want to avoid using Sing, but you never know, obviously. But Metronome, you choose one of our opponent's active Pokemon attacks and use it as this attack. Um, this guy hits Giratina's uh, for a one-hit KO because it hits for weakness, but that's not really what we are trying to do. I think we have a fairly decent matchup against Giratinas in general, because Dragonite gets rid of their energy. Uh, Clefairy, um, I think, is a useful Pokémon in matchups where the price trades are relevant, like, for example, Rayquaza, stuff like that, where we offer... A, it doesn't really matter if it has 40 HP, 
um, it just matters that we give out a single prize and we take a knockout as well and Clefairy is going to do that in a lot of matchups so I like that about it uh, so it's it's all about um, the the price trades. Obviously, copying GX attacks is good. Uh, some GX attacks that come to mind are Umbreons uh, to get rid of the opponent's energy. Espions is also very very good. Uh, copying a Lapras GX attack is also fairly decent, um, especially if the opponent cannot do anything, because then the next turn you can just use the Metronome to copy Lapras second attack and attack again. Uh, so it, it does work well with this deck, and it, it is a, a one-off, so I'm, I'm fairly happy with Clefairy. I haven't used it a lot, but I haven't played that, those many matches, and the game that I used it was beautiful, because um, I copied Rayquazas and attacked with, with, uh, with the, um, the Clefairies, which was awesome. Uh, as far as the Vika Vault goes, we are playing 3-1-3 uh, uh, line, and then we have Rare Candy. Uh, because the stage 1 is not a grass type, we are not playing Forest of Giant Plants, because if it was, we could evolve on the same turn, so we wouldn't play Rare Candy. But unfortunately, we don't have a Charger Bug that's uh, grass, so we have to play the, the one that we have, which is Electric type. Uh, we play one, because sometimes uh, it is good to evolve, like, uh, and we can bring it back from our discard pile, whilst uh, Rare Candy we cannot. Uh, we can also do this uh, while Item Locked. Okay, so we have the, the three rare candy that I talked about. Um, we have a couple of cards that help us sh uh, help us shuffle Pokemon and energy back into our deck. Usually, shuffling the energy is more important, uh, especially because Dragonite also gets Pokemon back. Um, I am only playing so it's Super Rod, and the other is um, Brock's Grit. I can see uh, an argument for exchanging Super Rod for energy recycling or Energy Recycler, whatever, the, the, the trainer that shuffles 5 energy back. But I think this is a little more versatile, uh, especially because sometimes in the early stages of the game we might discard like um, a Charger Bug or something like that and we might need it back. So playing the, the Super Rod, I think sometimes it helps and it there's not a lot of matches where we actually need to shuffle all 5 energy back into the deck. So I think that's also nice. Um, it is important to have a card that shuffles that's not a supporter because sometimes we do want to play this thing and then immediately Sycamore to draw cards. Uh, we can also use the, the Super Rod to shuffle like a Taurus and then Ninja Boy into it, if that's the only Taurus that we have. That's also something we can do. Uh, so yeah, uh, Super Rod, uh, Brock. Brock has the obvious advantage that it shuffles more cards and it's a supporter, so we can bring it back with VS Seeker. Um, we are playing a lot of consistency cards, so we have the 4 Trainers Mill and 4 Ultra Ball. Obviously Ultra Ball goes for the Shaman, Trainers Mill goes for the Ultra Ball, Supporters, and also the Rare Candy, which is fairly important. We are playing 2 Lysander, uh, pretty standard stuff. Only 1 N, unfortunately, would love to play the second, but I don't know, really know what to cut. And I've actually been happy, because we have another um, quote-unquote uh, draw supporter, which is Skyla. Uh, this guy, or this girl, sorry, this gal, uh, <laughs> can search as any trainer card. Usually goes for the rare candy. If we already have the rare candy, usually goes for the Ultra Ball. Uh, it's a nice one to have in uh, decks that need the, to get the stage 2 with the rare candy. As I mentioned, we are playing 2 Ninja Boy. Um, sometimes we do get the turn where we play the Taurus. That actually, because we are playing 2-2, two, two, uh, it does happen uh, a lot in a lot of games. We are playing for Sycamore as usual, and then we have a split of tools. We have two Fighting Fury Belt and two Floatstone. Um, this is a two-hit knockout deck. If the opponent is not knocking out one of our guys on a single hit, the Floatstone is better. But still having the, the Fighting Fury Belt is awesome, especially on a Taurus. If we can tank like 160 damage, Rage already hits for 180. Uh, with at 180 damage on our Taurus, we can actually hit for 200, so that kills an Umbreon, for example. Um, so yeah, it's it's nice to have, so that we have a really tanky uh, basic Pokemon in Taurus. Uh, as far as energy goes, we are playing a lot, so we ha we are playing the 4 DCE, which we can attach from our hand and immediately power up all of our guys like half at least, and the Taurus. Uh, uh, gets totally powered up by a single attachment and then we are playing three uh, sorry 10 energy uh, it's a split between grass and lightning because we want to get them with Vika Volt. our guys don't really care which energy they have attached except for Vika Volt, which really wants one lightning and the others can be any type uh, so lightning is a little bit more important in this deck but not too much 
Um, actually, the grass might be relevant on Clefairy if we intend to use the GX attack on Laurentis. <laughs> that's that might that's that is something that could happen. Uh, I don't expect it to happen a lot, but it, it is something that could happen. Well, that's the deck. Uh, I think it's quite fun. It's um, there's so many options that you can get, you can go through uh, in every single game, and you are hitting your opponent where they least expect it. So at least while people are not really used to this deck, I think it's going to be fairly decent. Obviously, we struggle against Garbo or decks, um, but if we manage to build a Vika Vault like on the second turn, and we actually manage to use this, the the ability once or twice, like if we use it twice. That's already perfect. Like you can, they can play the garb, and you're already set because you already built like a Dragonite or two, or even a Dragonite or a Taurus, or even a Dragonite and the Vika Vault itself. So we would be fine, uh, even if the opponent gets the the garb at that point. Uh, well, that's the deck. Let's go play some matches and see how we fare. Okay, first match against the Grass Colorless deck. What am I expecting out of this? Uh, maybe it is. Laurentis Vile Plume, uh, maybe it is um, the CGI with Taurus and Lugia and stuff. I am expecting a good deck out of my opponent. Good meta deck. And we are giving our opponent guards, so there's Forest of Giant Blade. Yeah, the CGI. Our opponent also took a Mulligan, so we are not giving him an extra card, at least. Uh, he finds the basic, so we are taking a mulligan. Just waiting for our opponent to choose the basic Pokemon. I think that maybe this game could be a little bit faster resolving this type of things. Okay, start off with a Shaman. That's not ideal at all. Let's see what happens. Uh, we probably have a hard time against the CGI. Um, if they are quick enough to assemble three, okay, they also start with the Shaman, which is awesome. But they have more cards in hand than we do. Um, if they assemble two the CGIs, it's going to be hard to even get one of our Vika Vaults into play because they can just knock out one of the uh, little guys. I forget the name of the basic one. Uh, I probably have to go play two on the same turn. And my opponent already has one Decidueye on the table, which is lovely. And they hit us for 20. Is that all? Okay, so they attach to the active. Uh, don't really know what to make of that. And he plays an N, okay. So he's going to retreat next turn, that's why he attached. But he's losing the attachment for this turn. I don't know how many floatstones, like, I play a lot of floatstones in my deck, but... Uh, we are in, we have a very awkward hand. I am not going to concede, I'm going to keep playing this game, but it's going to be hard for sure. I don't even know what I go for. Like, I can uh, ninja boy this shaman away for a uh, Taurus. I could also go for the... Basic on the Vika Vault line. But I think that's a little scary because my opponent could probably knock it out next turn. So. He's having a, <laughs> a very powerful turn. So this might be a, a, a very short game, unfortunately. Yeah, he does play Floatstorm, so I don't know why he attached there. I don't think I would. Okay, so we drew a, a very good card. Like Ultra Ball is exactly type of thing we need. Let's Ninja Boy. And I am going for the Taurus because it already has damage. And if the opponent uses the CGI, like he, he sh spent the energy last turn. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, so he spent the, la the energy last turn. So my thinking is he's going to take a little bit to charge up one of his guys to kill my Taurus. So I will have some damage on it. And... Ugh. This sucks. I have very bad hand. Maybe 
Maybe we should have kept that Fear Seeker. Um, I was thinking that the double colorless energy was important, but maybe the Via Seeker, I could Via Seeker away this Shaman. Uh, but I, I would still need like the, the rare candy to pull this one off. So I don't know. I really don't know. Not only is this a hard matchup, we also s started like very... Oh, N, is he going to play the N? Yep. Oh, that's nice. That's very good for us. I guess that's the advantage of having a very big hand, even if it's not the best hand ever, because we can actually... Okay, so now he's retreating. Is he attacking? Yeah, he is attacking. I don't mind that at all. Once he gets to 60, our Mad Bull GX kills uh, his guys in one hit. Which he already did, so I have the option to do that and take two prizes. Yep, um, I could shuffle one energy, don't know if I want to do that, maybe I just go for a, an ultra ball, or maybe I can Lysander out that Rowlet and just kill it this turn, because I'm pre protecting myself this way, yeah I like that actually, and I'm enjoying Taurus a lot, so I'm going to go with another one because the opponent putting damage on my guys, uh, it, it, because he cannot kill us in one turn. Like the twenty damage aren't helping him at all. I feel like so. Let me just. I think we're fine. As it is, <laughs> even without the Vika Vault, just having Taurus, turns out it's kind of awkward against uh, the CGI. Like the damage. Unless they're hitting us for... Okay, so they bring the shame in. Uh, I think at this point I might just forget about that shame in. But he's piling up damage on my Taurus. And that sucks. But it's also 20 damage a turn. Uh, and we can control the amount of damage that we take. Oh, nice. We got a rare candy. Um, Is that nice, actually? Uh, just a Super Roth, shuffle this thing. I'm playing the Dragonite, because I might as well, it's better than discarding it. And it, it's obviously an attacker. We get the the, um, the little guy, so I'm going to put it down. Grubbin, yeah. That's his name. And I'm attaching to the Shaman, mostly to be able to attack next turn and get the Shaman out of active position using the Sky Return. Um. I do have the Via Seeker for the Skyla, for the rare candy, so that is good to have, for sure. This guy's at 100, uh, it's still, still fine. Still a long way from dying, I think. Um, yeah, let's Ultra Ball. I'm going to Ultra Ball first. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we do have Rare Candy there, so it's nice to know. Because if we didn't, it would be better to get a Sage one instead. So this way... Whoops, not this one. <laughs> I want the Skyla. I am going for the Rare Candy. It's the only one left. Oh, actually we have two, but we don't need more than that. Because I think just getting one of these guys out is going to be enough. I'm probably not going to attack with the Vika Vault. I don't know, you never know, right? So let's strong charge. We have grass, so let's attach it here. And we have four of these, so let's attach here. And I am also going to get the Shaman out of active position using the Sky Return. Um, I am going to promote the Taurus, and the reason for that is if my opponent plays a DC, he's only hitting us for 70, so that doesn't kill our Taurus. And we can actually... Oh no, I forgot about... Yeah, this was a mistake. Because I forgot about the CGI's attack, or ability. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, this is... Yeah, the opponent's going to take a knockout. I, I was hasty, I think. The opponent... Oh boy, this is bad. Well, it's not like we we didn't lose the game here, but it is awkward. Uh, so let's just start going with Dragonite. 
it's going to be super awkward for my opponent to attack us um, with the CGI because we get rid of his energy so obviously he can to hit us but we also make his ability a little irrelevant uh, and I'm going to start attaching to the Vika Vault because why the hell not so I can draw three cards here Hopefully I don't draw basic energy. We did draw one, but oh, we got um, Lysander. Do we want to Lysander something? I think just getting rid of this energy on the Trevenant EX is better. Trev does retreat for three, so I think, yeah, I think I just Hyper Beam here. Uh, I think I take the grass. Uh, I think it's. I don't know if it's more likely that he has it, but I'm not really too scared about the 70 damage attack. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I lose my shaman. That doesn't matter too much. Yeah, giving up the Taurus there was kind of bad. Like, we gave two prizes where we didn't really need to. But the opponent doesn't have a, a great game, like he stumbled a lot on his DCGY and I also took a cheeky knockout on that Rowlet, but he did uh, stumble a bit. Maybe because he's playing cards like Pokepuff <laughs> instead of consistency cards. Oh, there's the Rowlet. But I do have the Lysander, maybe I Lysander that out, because at this point I am going for 5 prizes anyways. I mean, it is possible that he just evolved like to the CGY this turn. So there's the Dartrix. And he actually attaches to the Trevenant in the active position. That's that's great. Like, if I had this card of the VCE, he could have attached anywhere else and still attack. And this way he doesn't. He is forced to attack to the active if he wants to uh, attack. Attach to the active if he wants to attack. And I can just get rid of his energy uh, later. So I'm just going to bring the Rowlet because I want to keep. Like, I am going to take some... Um, yeah, I'm going to take 5 prizes anyways. I don't think I'm getting close to dying anytime soon. So he's hitting me for 70 plus a 20 there. <laughs> That's a knockout on our Dragonites. And we kill this guy with our Taurus. And oh, Brock's great, okay. But I think we will be left with a very good board position, and he won't, so I think it's worth it. Hopefully, we will end up like with a killing Shaman. It's really easy to get there, I think, either with the Taurus or with the Vika Vault, because the Vika Vault hits for weakness, and even if he didn't, it's enough damage, so. <laughs> Okay. This guy is dead. Wood Blast is going to kill it, but we are going to be fine anyways. Uh, I think the important thing was killing the Rollet there. We could have just discarded the energy from the, the Dark the Dragonite, but I don't know. I think it's just better to just go for this now. Um So the Taurus kills this guy. And then we have Four, four. I think I still have one energy left in my deck. Yeah, let's bring something to my hand. Uh, it doesn't matter too much. What cards I bring? Because I think we will end up playing Sycamore, so let's use Strong Charge. Um, yeah, we do have one lightning, I counted right, so let's bring it back. Um, I have to attach here. And then we play the Strainer's Mill, because why the hell not? Okay, we got a Fighting Fury Belt, that's nice. I'm going to put it down on our Taurus. It's going to be a little harder for my opponent to kill it. Uh, 
Um, okay, Trainer's Mill, we got Ultra Ball. I am going to discard as many cards as possible just to get rid of them. Just in case we get end. Uh, 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 might as well get this guy out because we, if the opponent doesn't hand end us, it's one less card in the deck. And let's just or an attack, I guess. I might need a float. I might need a fighting fury belt. We never know, so I'm not going to play them now. Oh, we drew another one. Okay, we also have extra energy to be able to retreat from one of our guys. One of our shaman, that is. Okay, so now the opponent is coming forth with his Decidueye. He has to end us here, because if he doesn't, we can kill his Shaman. Okay, so he lies under the Shaman out, okay. Is he going to kill it? I don't think he can. And he just attached. Oh, yeah, he actually could. My opponent misplayed here. Yeah, we, we would have lost this game, actually. Because he, he, he could have... Feathered Harrow and use the Decidueye's attack. This makes me feel like I want to play extra N in this deck because it would be better to have N last turn. I don't know. Yeah, this is this is game for us, but I think our opponent misplayed. Well, it isn't game because he we cannot retreat from the Shaman. Okay, I take back all that I said. What do I even do here? I'm definitely going to get this Shaman out of active position. And I think I'm going to play everything now, because I want to end. Yeah, I didn't even attach to the guy on the active position, because my opponent might end. So I just Sky Return. Take those 30 damage. Let's go with Vega Vault. It's, it's questionable. Like, the lines of play that I've made are questionable. Because I might have given up too many prizes without really needing. But I was trying to conserve as many energy in play as possible. And at the same time, making the most out of my Pokemon. So even if he took prize... Like, but it is true that... Uh, the opponent could have killed us there uh, because we didn't get to an end on time I don't know but yeah he, he definitely could have killed us so the opponent is doing as much as he can okay feather arrow love to draw Lysander now or a VX se VS Seeker he plays Hollow Hunt, which is a GX attack on the CGY GX. What is he getting back into his hand? Probably some energy. I'd go for energy if I was my opponent. Yeah, we need a VS Seeker stack. We don't have Stadium, so we are kind of locked. Okay, so he does have the knockout next turn. Oop! There we go. Um, I don't think I deserve it because I, <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes. But this is a hard deck to play. I'll say that. Um, and we just take a knockout on that shaman and win. Woohoo! First match, baby. Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I misplayed. Um, yeah, I think I misplayed in this matchup our opponent misplayed worse than us he punted worse than we did so I think he deserved even less to win <laughs> uh, so yeah I'll take it I'll take it uh, but you guys could see how the deck works we got a Vika Vault really like really late we actually managed to pull ourselves out of that very awkward start with Shaman and uh, Ninja Boy so let's go for another match I wanna play another one time for the second match we are playing against Dark, Psychic, Colorless. This can be a lot of stuff, uh, but I'm betting it's Umbreon and Espeon or something like that. Uh, the new decks, everyone is playing the new decks. 
Okay, um, we start with the Taurus, I think. I think it's better than the Dragonite, because Dragonite doesn't do much on the first turns, and Taurus is immediately annoying. So we see a Delinquent, and see Max Elixir, so maybe... Maybe... What deck can this be? Maybe this is an Ivoltol deck? Oh yeah, it can be Ivoltol. I, I forgot that Garbodor is Psychic, so it does make sense that it's Gar that is Ivoltol. Ivoltol can kill Taurus well, but usually it takes some time to do so. So I think this might be... Darkrai, okay, so <laughs> I, I was wrong again. Um, what can we do here? I'm going to attach this energy because I'm not going to attack anyways. And I can actually Ninja Boy away this Dragonite into the Grubbin. And now, next turn, we can Skyla and Ultra Ball for the Vika Vault. And I'm fairly happy with this hand, otherwise. I also have the stage 1 in my hand, but if I can just go off and just have my attacker down, I will do so. My opponent plays a Hoopa. And go Sword, Dark Cry, and Shaman. So I didn't see any dragon uh, type on his deck uh, indicator, so I'm assuming he doesn't play Giratina. It's just straight up uh, Dark Cry, trying to be as quick as possible. Oh, we see an Ivol Tall. I wasn't, I wasn't really expecting that. Mm, Max Elixir. He actually attaches to the Ivol Tall. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, it does hit the Taurus for some damage, and the Taurus. Um. If the Taurus takes a knockout on that Ivol Tall, I guess my opponent doesn't lose too much. But if he keeps hitting me with that with that thing, I, at some point I can Lysander something like a Dark Rye out and kill it. So I don't know. Well, my opponent is doing a setup for six though. That's just the active. And Blazman Ultra Ball. What is he doing? Discarding energy. I don't know, this feels wrong. Why would you discard the energy just because, like, yeah, oh, okay, so you're playing the Sycamore. So he chose to not bring any Pokemon to his hand to discard. Oh, escape rope, okay. He doesn't take a knockout, which is perfect. Uh, what I want to get is a Floatstone out of this Trainer's Mail, although. I wouldn't complain about a Sycamore, because that would... I don't know. Maybe I just attach a DCE and retreat. Yeah, because I'd rather just have card draw, because I'm going to need it. Yeah, we, j we get a Sycamore, that's perfect. We will need that Sycamore next, next turn. Um... Let's just Skyla. Let's just get the rare candy. Let's go get the Vika Vault. Discard this thing and the Lysander. Which we do not mind having on the discard pile. Uh, could also attack. But I think it's better to just retreat. And I have to retreat before I evolve, obviously. So let's just go into Taurus mode. Uh, Vika Vault, Strong Charge. So we have three of these and five of these. So we want to get none of the Grass and one of the Lightning on the Taurus. We could maybe go for the Vika Vault, but I don't really want to give my opponent any incentive to start attacking us. So I'm just going <laughs> to charge up the Taurus. I don't want my opponent to attack the Vika Vault. To give him more incentive to do so, I think would be unwise at this stage. But, but, but. 
Yeah, my opponent discarded a lot of energy. But he's also bringing it back with Ivoltol, so... Might actually be a good strategy since we're not pressuring him too much. Oh, X Manic, okay. It's not like I have any Pokemon that I want to charge, but I'm going to play the Sycamore, so I'm assuming I will get some Pokemon out, so it hurts us a little bit. <laughs> if he keeps spamming the X Manic, it hurt hurts us more, obviously. I am going to Sycamore without playing any energy. Okay, we got a Dragonite, that's great news. And I'm going to attach this DC there. Yep. Let's horn attack again. Next turn we can actually Lysander something out if my opponent attacks us with the uh, Ivoltal. Although we are at 150 and that's really easy to hit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. With another one it's 7. And he needs a Fire Fury Belt to hit us for a 1 hit KO. Well, it's not a 1 hit KO, but to, to hit a, a knockout on the Taurus at this point. And that's a little scary. Maybe we should have played this Trainer's Mail looking for a Fighting Fury Belt. Yeah, we haven't played that at 1, so we still have 2 in our deck. So maybe I should have gone for that. I think the Dragonite's attack is going to be good in this game. Because it does cut their damage a little bit. Okay, so he puts the energy on the Hoopa. Well, it does make sense because if I knock out the Hoopa, he just has uh, the EXP share. So, yeah, that does make sense. Wow, Mad Bull GX doesn't kill this guy with a DC on. He gets rid of zero energy from his side. If I rage, he kills me. Yeah, this is a, a pivotal turn, I'd say. I don't really know what to do here. I can less under something out. Kill it with my Taurus, get a couple of prizes. I have to make a move here, so I'm going to put this guy down. Maybe that's wrong, but I, I don't know. I feel like the Taurus is going to die after, like next turn, so I'm going to have extra bench space anyways. Uh, I can go for this guy which has the most energy, which is the guy he's probably going to attack with, so yeah, I'm just going for that one. He's not going to lose any energy though, <laughs> which is kind of sad, but yeah, that's just strong charge. I think it's better. If we lose our Va Viga Vault, we still have the DC in hand. So hopefully it is better to do this. Uh, and we can actually attack to the Viga Vault, I think. Might become an attacker. So that's just Mandible GX. Yep, I want to use my GX attack. I still have the 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 warning there. I didn't take it out because I'm afraid I might use the GX attack without thinking too much about it. That's the one warning I didn't take out. But it, if it becomes too annoying, I'll <laughs> ask the Pokemon trading card game to not bother me again. So our opponent is sitting for one, two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 210, Jesus Christ, that's a lot. It's actually scary. We are definitely on the back foot here. Because, especially since we are not getting 1 hit kills on his guys. Yeah, Dragonite, let's go. I mean, we take one energy out of him from him, but then he can get there anyways. Let's play the Trainer's Mill. Hope we hit the Fighting Fury Belt. We do not. That sucks. Yeah, I think I have to go for the Sycamore. Because I do want to Brock, but I don't think I can, like... 
at least not this turn. Gosh, I'm sleepy. I think I will go for this. Let's put the Dragonite down. <laughs> Do I will I need a bench space? Do I just ultra wall for a shaman trying to hit that N? I'll try it out. I'll try it out. Let's see. This is definitely hard. Like maybe should go up in N on ends okay so we got we don't have an but we do have a Lysander don't we so we can actually Lysander something out I think I leave the grass energy there and just get the lightning here oh my god this deck is 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 super fun but it's also really hard to play as you can see this Dragonite is going to die so, I'm just going to attach the shaman. This Dragonite is going to die. I'm just trying to get rid of some energy. Um, I have the Lysander for next turn. And also, Hyper Beam. Well, it doesn't matter if I use Hyper Beam or not. Oh, Delinquent. Okay. I'm going to discard. A Sycamore, a Shaman, and <laughs> this is really hard. I go, yeah, shouldn't have played that. That uh, grabbing, that's for sure. That is for sure. But we will have a Dragonite attacking next turn, and with a Fighting Fury Belt. And we're getting rid of one energy from our opponent's side, so that's good. Uh, do we get a Taurus? Yeah, we, sh we have to get a Taurus, actually. We cannot just get one and not the other. So I have to put this thing here. I have to attach. Uh, I will play the Taurus. And I will actually use the Vika Vault first, because we might draw the energy, and we do not want that. So I will just start putting them on our guy. Let's play the Shaman. Yep. Okay, we got a Lysander. Uh, yeah, let's bring the Alter Boy Ball to our hand. Let's play the Super Rod. Let's shuffle some energy. Yep. This is fine. What else? I am going to attack with the Dragonite, but I actually don't know if I take a knockout here or not. Like, uh, Fultzon goes here because it's the hardest one to retreat. And let's just Hyper Beam away. Like, our opponent is going to hit us for. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's not enough to kill us. It needs to hit 11. It is scary because he, my opponent has a huge hand. But I actually don't know if he can manage to get two energy in play this turn. VS yeah, Seeker for N, okay. If he has a Lysander, it just kills us, right? So seeing him via Seeker for an N is very... He's playing a Trainer's Mill. Does he find the N? The Lysander? If he Lysanders are our guys, we're just dead. It's super hard to play against, like... Oh, Parallel City, okay. Probably just discarding. Well, if he plays the parallel city, he's hitting us for less damage. So that's even worse. I don't think he's going to play it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. He needs to hit 11 to kill us. 
11 energy. Okay, we escape rope, huh? That's interesting. Which guy do I promote? Cannot be the shaman, that's for sure. So I think it's either... Taurus is, is, he can also knock out, so it has to be the Vika Vault. Because uh, this guy I can... Re yeah, I could all... Oh, Jesus Christ, I made a mistake here. So I'm thinking I, sh I have to promote the Vika Vault because it's actually one that I can retreat, or if, if nothing else I can attack with it. If the opponent also retreats into something that he cannot attack with. But I, with a Grebin in the active, I could actually retreat by using Strong Charge. So this was definitely a mistake. So I'm going to lose my Vika Vault, probably. Yeah, my opponent just switched again. Yeah, man. This was hard. I still have one avenue. I think it's the only thing that I can do here, which is... I... Okay, so my opponent actually went for the shaman. Okay, not that it matters. So I think my my play here is going to kill my Vika Vault. No, oh, that sucks. I mean, it doesn't ma matter too much now that I think of it that he killed my Vika Vault. Because even if I have a Lysander, he just cut the shaman off his bench. So, yeah. Yeah, it actually doesn't matter too much. And he missed the max elixir. Oh boy. I think. Let's see what we get out of this. Okay, we got a Sycamore. Yeah, we, we get the Sycamore. You never know. So I think our play is to Lysander, the Darkrai. Attack with a Dragonite and hope the opponent doesn't have it. And by it, I mean a Switch and a Lysander. And I think we are in good position. Actually, I think we're in a very good position. Looking at this. So the opponent attaches from hand. That's not too scary. Still needs like to be able to retreat. And he played the... the um, the Sycamore, so he's not going to evolve this turn uh, to attack us this turn. Uh, sorry, to kill us this turn with a Lysander. He maybe can do it next turn, but not this turn. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Still not enough. So he really needs to retreat here. If nothing else, to not die. If he manages to retreat into that other dark ride, we might be in a little bit of a pickle because <laughs> he's going to kill us. Uh, the opponent is saying we have a good deck, okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And we, we win the game. Wow. The opponent did not find a way to retreat. That's awesome. It's super close. I might have misplayed again. Uh, <laughs> as you guys see, this deck is not that easy to play. Um, but yeah, I, I'll take any win that I can get. Uh, it's not that this deck loses a lot, because I've actually been winning more than I've been losing, believe it or not. But it's so much fun to play, like there's so many lines that we can take uh, that I feel like this is a wonderful rogue deck uh, to show you guys. I hope you enjoy this, I hope you like the deck as much as I do, and I hope you try it out if you have the cards. Um, tell me what you think in the comments below. Um, if you want to see me playing more matches, come join my streams. That I'll have the link in the description below as usual. And I hope to see you guys next time. Bye!